what's going on guys uh back today and uh fitting to tackle the radiator uh so um probably gonna have to let it sit here and cool down for a little bit because i just came back from town um y'all saw my last video i done i changed the uh, turbo boot uh the hot air intake and um they um i went down the road and uh, got it up to uh, I don't know about 27 uh, psi boost and uh, she blew off uh, so I limped it back home I was just right down the road so um, put it back on tighten it up uh, one of my friends told me um, that you can use um, hairspray so I tried that and uh, basically clean clean it off real good clean the oil and stuff off the pipe and stuff and you know just spray some hairspray on it um uh, my son of course what i need hairspray for <laughs> i ain't got no hair but but my son he he has hairspray so um uh, so i use that max hold uh air spray and um uh, clean it off sprayed it on there and then uh tighten it down uh pretty good and uh what i done is i took a magic marker and i'll show you um i'll turn around here in just a second and show you but I marked on the pipe, because uh, that's where it blew off. Uh, marked on the pipe, uh, right up against the boot. Uh, so that way, if it ever, if it slipped back, then I would know it. Uh, so, um, I'll show you. It slipped uh, maybe a 16th of an inch, I guess. Uh, I got it up to about 26, 27 PSI. And um, I haven't put it under a load yet, as far as pulling a, pulling a load. Um, I just basically from a dead stop just I mean just gassed on it and um, and uh, run it hard that way um, after I get the, the radiator and all that stuff done then I'm on uh, hook my trailer up and probably load my tractor and stuff like that up and then put it under a load that way and see what it does but I uh, took it to one of my friends down the road and um, he had uh, he tightened it up even more so um so far it's it's done good i've done got out like i said not under a load just just getting on just getting on it pretty hard and getting up to about 25 26 27 um pounds of boost and uh so far it's holding so i'll turn y'all around real quick and show you but there's the new boot you see right there the the magic marker basically i took the magic marker and put it up against the boot and just made a mark and uh, to where it was because it is fully seated so um so that's about how much it came off before i tightened it up the last time uh like i said it's maybe a 16th of an inch maybe an eighth i don't know but so far it hasn't moved anymore since then so but anyway uh what we're fixing to do uh this may be a, a so long video and uh, i'm just gonna do it just a little bit at a time uh, like I said, uh, I just got back from town not too long ago, so so everything's still warm. But I'm fixing to go ahead and start taking some of this stuff off, um, disconnecting the batteries, moving this uh, this cable right here, uh, taking off the fan shroud. I got to move the um, transmission control module out of the way, and just uh, see what else I need to get to. Um, whenever I do this, um, whenever I got the radiator out. I'm going to change the belt. Uh, I'm changing the thermostats, and uh, and while I got the radiator out of the way, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and blow out the intercooler um, and uh, clean it out and everything. So, because um, cause otherwise I can't I can't get really get to it. So, but um, so y'all just stay tuned, hang with me, and uh, we'll try to get this done. All right. All right, guys. So what we're gonna start with is uh, we're gonna disconnect the batteries, and uh, cause I got a the that other cable that goes across and everything. Um, I got to completely take it uh, off and hang it over here on the passenger side, so I don't want uh, anything uh, touching or anything like that. And then uh, if I have to end up taking across or taking off undoing that trans uh transmission control module then um i don't want 
whenever I'm plugging it back up or anything like that, don't want to take a chance of anything shorting out. So, uh, cause that, I tell you what, whenever I had to replace that, <laughs> that was not cheap. So, so yep, just disconnect them. So everything's out of the way and we'll go over here to passenger side or driver side, excuse me. All right, guys, I forgot to tell you on uh, uh, just taking the battery terminals off, uh, at least on mine, this is a uh, 2012 uh, Chevy Silverado 3500 uh, HD Dually 6.6 .6 Duramax. That's what we're working on. They, um, um, I think the battery terminals and stuff like that, they're pretty much the same on just about all vehicles, but that's a 10 millimeter. All right, this one right here, uh, this is on the driver's side. And I'm going to take this off because i got to disconnect uh, this cable here. This goes back uh, to the back, I believe, to my um, uh, to my power inverter. So uh, we're just going to loosen it off and disconnect it. Yep. Yeah. I may have to put this back on. There we go. And this bolt right here, at least on mine, is a... 14 millimeter Let's Take that off set it out of the way And ain't got no power to it going to it. So we're good Guys what I do if I take a nut or bolt or something like that off if I can put it back I'm gonna put it back so that way I don't lose it Because uh, I am the world's worst at losing nuts and bolts so We're just going to put her back on there. And just take this whole cable. And just get it out of the way. Alright guys, like I said, just bear with me. Anybody who's done this before. Try not to give me too much grief. It's the first time I've ever done this. I mean, I'm I'm not a mechanic, but I am pretty knowledgeable. And uh, so you just got these little these little push tabs right here. Just pull them out. Maybe I can see that. Don't lose these. I mean, you can go buy some more, but just. Try not to lose them. They're them little tabs that you just stick in there and pushes and holds it in. So you got one right there. Then you got one over on the other side. Just sort of set these out of the way here. And then your transmission control module. You got one. Right get in there behind it. Take your flathead screwdriver and just Get a little bit of pressure, but try not to break anything. And so it just sits down in there. So we'll just put that out of the way and we'll go over here and get the other one. We can't really move that completely out of the way until we take that hose off.
Sometimes these things can be a little pain in the butt to get off. Because I don't know if this thing's ever been off before. And ain't wanting to cooperate too much. There we go. All right, let's see here. We got a couple more down in the bottom. Let me see if I can find them, then I'll show you. All right, guys, show you what I got done so far. All right. So to make things easier, I uh, took the air filter and air filter housing out. I uh, just basically took the cover off, uh, took the filter out, uh, undone it right here. Um, let's see here. Undone some sensor lines. Um, this one right here goes right there and then some of this stuff guys i i have no idea what it's exactly called but anyway this one right here goes to the air fil uh the filter sensor i do know that one um of course this right up here that's your exhaust brake and all that stuff um this is the basically cold air intake so basically i took uh the whole housing and everything out basically you just take the filter out uh disconnect uh this right here and then let's see here if i can turn y'all around basically this goes in that little hole right there just pull it away from it and then just pull it up it's got one little tab right there that it holds into so that makes everything easier to get to they uh i was trying to get to a bolt to the fan shroud the top part of it and i think it's stripped the other side doesn't have one so this thing's been taken off before but let's see here if i can show y'all yeah see that bolt right there Oh, uh, it's too big for a nine millimeter and a 10 millimeter seems like it fits it, but I think it's stripped out. So I don't know. We're fixing to find out. Hopefully it's not. No, uh, it means it's, in order to get it out, I'm probably going to end up breaking something and I don't want to do that. So anyway, uh, make sure I got my light cut off and the battery down. Anyway, uh, guys, I'm just, I mean, this may take me a couple of days. Somebody else, uh, it may take a full, I mean, you may can do it in a day. Uh, I'm sure you could. Um, I'm just taking my time. Uh, it's sort of warm out here. And uh, as most of you know, I can't take the heat like I used to. Uh, so I don't want to push myself and overdo it and then uh, end up in the hospital. So, but, um, um. Uh, Anyway, uh, oh yeah, let's see, turn y'all back around, show you what else I'm doing. And I took the hose out from the reservoir, just took it off, uh, lost a little bit of antifreeze. Of course, I'm gonna end up losing it all. Uh, I got a catch a pan down there that I drain my oil and stuff like that in. So it's not hitting the ground, anyway. Um, all this land out here i don't think i'm really worried about it but of course if you know who sees this video they come out here and say something to me but anyway yeah guys uh like i said i'm just gonna take my time on this uh, i'm not in no big hurry to get it done uh, i want to make sure that i get it done right and don't tear anything up and um um uh, 
but I mean, like I said, I've never done this before, so I mean, this just goes to show, like I said, I'm I'm not a mechanic, but I am mechanically inclined, so that makes sense. They, I try to fix things on my own whenever I can, um, but I mean, this goes to show, if I can do this, you can do it. Anybody can do it. Uh, like I said before, whenever I was doing RV transport, uh, all my videos starting on a budget, uh, stuff like that. Guys, if you can do stuff yourself, do it. Uh, especially in this day and time when fuel price is so uh, high and rates so low and, and everything. you got to save every penny that you can. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it sometimes can be a headache. You're going to run into problems that just makes you want to just burn the truck but um but i mean just do it yourself if, if you have the time i mean if you don't have the time and you have the extra money then and if you're uh, pushing for time to just get it done quick and and everything if you got the extra money then then go uh let somebody that knows what they're doing do it but um uh, but if not then do it yourself uh save that money um because I guarantee you, uh, this job right here, if you took it to a mechanic, they'll probably charge you probably $1,000 just to do it. That's not counting the parts. So, um, anyway, I'm finna run inside real quick. And um, my old stomach growling, I haven't had anything to eat today. So, I'm gonna fix you something to eat. And I'm gonna come back out here and, and work on this a little bit more. So, alright. Alright, guys. I got part of the uh, fan shroud out. And uh, what I've done is... Basically, I uh, took the, it's cooled down a little bit, so I took the upper radiator hose off. Uh, of course, you're going to lose a lot of antifreeze there. Then, uh, moved the transmission control module, moved it out of the way. Those, uh, what I thought was bolts over on the other side I was showing you, uh, they're not. They're actually these little pieces right here. You can see that. Uh, so I just popped them out and uh came right out now when you get on the other side let's see let me get over let me go on the other side and i'll show you all right i hope y'all can see this now these lines right here now these go to your air conditioner you do not want to disturb those if you don't have to because if you do you're going to lose your freon then you're going to have to go back and have it recharged so that goes to the reservoir sort of took that out of the way and all you do is just lift this out of the way you got a top section and a bottom section this is the top Let's see what else we got to get done. Uh, let me look around and see, and I get back with y'all. All right. So now what we're doing, we're taking the transmission uh, coolant lines off. So you got this little plastic piece. It just sort of slides over. There. Just take your little flathead screwdriver, pull it back. Then you got these little clips basically do not lose these i can't stress that enough do not lose these and you'll have a little there'll be like a little groove right there on top and that little piece right there will sit down inside that groove then this right here will wrap around the bottom so you just take your take your little pick and then just pick it out and um like i said just be careful don't lose it because if you pull it out too far then it'll pop out and it'll go down in there and then it's lost so another thing get you one of these little magnetic uh trays catch pans just drop it down in there so that way you won't lose it now so you got that top one right there and let's see if i can't get my little magnetic base i'm gonna leave a link in the description what i'm using to hold my phone but so you got that one right there and you got one down there at the bottom and that's gonna be a booger to get to 
So hope y'all can see that because of the sun and everything. But we gotta get that one out, and then uh, got some bolts and stuff to take out, and then the radiate the bottom radiator hose, and that should be it. The radiator should come out. So we'll get back y'all here in just a minute. All right. Oh me. So in order to get that bottom one, I think I'm gonna have to take the the inner fender liner out on the passenger side wheel. They um. Basically, you got them little uh, rubber, them little plastic clips. Guys, if you can find stuff to put stuff in, if you forget where, what bolts go where, get you a Ziploc bag, put them in, and then get your magic marker right on the Ziploc bag where they go. I just got an old dip can, and I'm keeping these little plastic pieces in there. Take them out. You got them just, just here and there throughout. You got one there. One up there, one there, one there, stuff like that. Just take them out. Then you got these little bolts that go all the way around. They're seven millimeter. Uh, just get you a little seven millimeter socket, take them out, and throw them in the same can. So we get this out, we'll get back with y'all here in just a second. All right, guys, so I got the, the inner fender wheel cover on the passenger side taken out. And, uh, I'm hoping I don't have to take this uh, air cooler uh, pipe off uh, to get to that bottom uh, transmission fluid line I was telling you about. But, but right now, we're fixing to take the uh, lower radiator hose off. And it has one of those clamps, too. It's a big one. Just take your flathead screwdriver. Just pop it out. It's the same way as that other one. You got a little notch in there. And put that little notch back in there and put it back. And then what I did is I took the uh, cap off the reservoir. And so we just... And it'll make a mess. And sit there and just let it drain like that. So... Guys, that radiator fluid ain't that old. <laughs> what I done here a uh, few few months ago, back whenever I was still doing RV transport, I'd um, I was thinking maybe the uh, antifreeze was bad. You know, maybe it been in there too long. So I went ahead and drained it and uh, put some fresh uh, antifreeze in. What I should have done is went ahead and done all this stuff then. Because now, all I'm doing is wasting that. So, But it's all good as long as it gets fixed. So, But I'm going to let that drain. I'll get back to y'all here in a minute. Alright guys, what I think I'm going to do is, uh, in order to get to that uh, coolant line, uh, transmission coolant line, uh, a little bit better. Because uh, I can't get to it from the top because of this plate so i'm gonna take this plate off and uh you got a bolt here here back in the back you got one here one here these two right here all you gotta do is just loosen up and pick up and pull out but you gotta take this one that one and that one completely off and uh so i'm gonna do that and uh remove that whole bracket that's the that's basically the bracket that the uh air filter housing sits on so all right all right, I'm back. All right. So, in my last statement, I said to take these out right here. This one, that one, that one over there. These are actually welded on, so they don't move. So, you got to get it from the top side. Now, I'll get up there in just a second. I'll show you the ones on the top side. Now, them front ones right there, you just back them off, loosen them up, and then pull it up and out. And it'll come off. So, up here at the top side... You got a bolt there, which holds uh, part of the red, uh, reservoir on. You got one there, 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 and there. I've already taken the bolts out. So just take that plate out, set it to the side. All right, so now I've already got that bolt out. So I'll loosen them two up, and then that right there should, that bracket right there should come out. And then hopefully I can get to that that coolant line 
Alright. Alright guys, so I got that line off finally. Uh that bottom one. <laughs> Man, that thing was a booger. But anyway, uh what you do is that thing's gonna be shoved. You see how it has like a little flare on it. It's gonna be shoved up in there. So whenever you put it back, you're gonna have to put it back up in there and and wiggle it up in there. But uh just take it, just wiggle it and pull, and it'll pop right out. So all right, so I got all the lines, I think, uh, undone. So now what we're going to do is um, uh, undo the uh, the radiator bolt, the bolts that hold the radiator in. So let's see over here. If I can get my phone to move. So you got one right there. And you got one in the same place on the other side. Then you got one down here at the bottom let's see you know. right there right beside the lower radiator hose so you got that one and you got so basically you got four i believe now that this line right here that was the other transmission coolant line so that thing would have probably been easier to get out if you would take this intercooler line off but i just couldn't get it off so and plus i didn't feel like messing with it so but i finally got it out so now we're fixing to start uh loosening up the bolts and then hopefully pull this thing out all right and by the way guys uh i forgot to tell you um them bolts right there are 13 millimeter so that's what you're gonna need to get those out all right guys uh finally got all four bolts out now, what I done is I took my battery out on the driver's side. So, let's see if I can get my hand down here. The bolt is going to be right in there. Now, you can take the driver's side inner fender liner out and get to it a lot easier, but I really didn't want to do that. So, it takes... It probably the time you take your inner fender liner out, put it back on, all that mess, it's gonna be about the same time. Just doing it this way, it's a lot slower go. So just take your wrench. You need a deep well socket in order to get past these lines right here. Um and just put it on the back side of the line and then put your uh put it on the bolt and back it off. And then once you get it loose, you can get it uh rest away with your hand so all right so everything's undone i believe i believe all the hoses are undone so we're fixing to set the camera up and try to take this thing out all right all right guys i got a little bit of way out so unless you take that inner fender or that inner uh cooler uh pipe off what you gotta do is sort of wiggle it out Pick this side, pick the driver's side up first and sort of move it that way. And then you can get that lower radiator uh, where the lower radiator hose uh, goes into. Then you can get that out. But then you still got a piece on your um, on the lower fan shroud that you got to get past. That's what I'm having problems with right now. Let's see here. Alright. What I make do. So I got the. Here I. Let's take the camera down and show you. So. Alright. Right there is where the lower radiator hose goes into. And then. You got your bracket right there where the bolt goes into, which that's already above where it's supposed to go. But you got to get that above the intercooler tube. So that's the reason you got to shift it that way, pick up. And then now you got 
Let's see here. If I can get a good angle. I can't see too well because of... Alright. So right. Well, if I can find my finger. There we go. Alright. That right there is part of the, the lower uh, fan shroud. So now you got to get where the lower radiator hose goes into you got to get it past that so what i'm going to try to do is since i got the bracket above the intercooler pipe now i'm going to try to bring it back towards the passenger side and lift up so we'll see how that works all right set y'all back up here i'm trying to take off as least amount of stuff as I can so I don't know if it's going to work out that way but don't want to try to damage the fins because just remember you got to put the new one in back the same way and honestly there there really ain't nothing wrong with this radiator that I'm taking out other than I think it's just clogged up with dirt so whenever I get it out I'm going to actually take it and move some stuff out of my way and uh, I'm going to take it and have it cleaned and flushed and just keep it as a backup, as a spare. So, so I'm trying not to damage it neither. can't get this thing to budge Woo. I don't know if I'm caught on something else or what Alright. If you had an extra set of hands, then it might be a little bit better. But I'm doing this all by myself, so that's what's taking so long and such aggravation. So So you got all these other lines and stuff in the way. I'm trying to find a good way to position myself. And that end just went back down in there.
Like I said, guys, this ain't no easy job. Mm. Especially for one person. All right, let's see what I got here. I'm trying to show this in real time so that way y'all can see. Because I've only seen a couple of videos of people taking these things out and they undo the bolts and all that stuff and they take them right out. Of course, they probably got more experience than what they're doing than I do, but I think they probably had the same trouble. They just not showing it and they're trying to make it easy. Well, I'm trying to show you the real world process of it. So. And there it is, guys. She's out. So let me sit her down and then. All right, give me one second. Let me wipe my hands off. I'm going to get all this antifreeze and grease and oil and transmission fluid and stuff all over my phone all right so there's the old one let me see here let me take it out of this all right so there's the old one you can tell it's got you can tell there's gunk, there's dirt and stuff clogged up in there, stuff like that. So, that's going to be the front where all the bugs hit. And that's the back side. So, all right. So, got that out now i can somewhat get in there to my uh intercooler and clean it out so i'm gonna probably take an air hose blow it try to get all the dust stuff out let like that out then i'll take some cleaner spray on it let it sit and then i'll take the water hose and wash it out a couple of times before i do anything else so they uh like i said uh uh of course i'm gonna show you doing that uh probably i don't know but i'm gonna probably add in this video like i said it's probably gonna be a long video but i just want to show you exactly uh the real world situation of it and not just somebody just uh making it look simple so so i'm gonna show you uh, uh pretty much mostly of the install of putting another one in but like i said i'm gonna gotta change my my fan belt and then I got to get in there too and change the uh, the thermostats, uh, which is right below the oil filler cap. So I'm gonna do that in a separate video, um, but uh, but I am gonna do that uh, before I put this new radiator back in. So alrighty, we'll get back with y'all. Uh, it may not be today, so it may be tomorrow, because like I said, I gotta change that other stuff out and clean that intercooler before I put the new radiator back in. So. But uh, but we'll get back with y'all when we get back when I get back at it. All right, all right, guys. So what I'm fixing to do now is uh, before I put the radiator back in, is uh, I'm fixing to blow out the 
uh, the intercooler and then uh, spray some foam and stuff in there uh, try to blow it out from the back side because uh, you know everything comes in from the front so that's the way it needs to go back out and so with the radiator in there you can't get to it to do that so I'm gonna try to clean that out and everything and uh, first I'm gonna blow it out with the air hose get all the dust and dirt as much as I can out and everything uh, some of it probably is going to go back into the, the air conditioner condenser. Uh, hopefully I can get that cleaned out too. But um, uh, there's really no way around it unless you take everything completely out. Um, after I do that, then I got some engine uh, degreaser, uh, the foamy uh, type. So I'll spray that uh, on the intercooler and then let it sit for, I don't know, 5-10 minutes. And then I'll take a water hose and blow it all out. So... All right, we'll get back here. Well, I'll turn y'all around and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I probably won't record doing it all, but. So, right here is where the radiator goes. That right there is the intercooler. This right here is the AC condenser. So, basically everything comes in from the front. So, I want to take the air hose and blow it back out the way that it came. And I don't want to try to push it further in there. So, Basically, I'll do that and I'll blow it all out with air hose, try to get all the dust and stuff I can out. And because water and dust and stuff like that don't mix, that turns to mud. So, you want to try to get all the dust you can out first, and then we'll spray the, the degreaser stuff on there and then wash it out. Another thing, what I've done is being that most of my lines and everything are, are still undone, I just took a rag. These are my transmission lines. I don't I don't want no water getting in there, no dust or anything like that. So I took uh, some rags and uh, I wrapped over them and taped them up. I got another one down there. Uh, so this one's your top one. That's your bottom one. Um, I don't. There really ain't no nothing gonna get in there. I might stuff a towel or something up in there, but but all right. Alright, so I'm finna blow it out with air hose and show you basically what all comes out. So, guys, you'll be amazed at the stuff that's gonna come out of here. I know y'all see all that stuff. Guys, that could have been my problem alone. All right, guys, so I don't know if you can, uh, saw all the dust and stuff that blew out there with the air hose. Uh, I think you've seen a little bit of it, but they, uh, anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to do that uh, a few more times. Uh, just let the air compressor build back up and uh, do that a few more times. And then, the, um, uh, then I will spray that foam stuff on there and let it soak in there for a little bit. And um, then wash it out with the water hose. Uh, and probably do that a couple of times. I only got one can, so uh, uh, so we'll just see how much uh, I can do that. Uh, hopefully, I have enough to maybe do it uh, two, maybe three times. So try to get it clean real good, and uh, uh, just got to find the best way uh, I can to to do the, uh, the AC condenser. I may have to blow it back because um, AC condenser is not that thick, so I may have to blow it out from the front and just 
just keep alternating alternating <laughs> my uh, back and forth between the AC condenser and the and the intercooler and uh, just try to get it to where it comes out in between the two so but uh we do that and then we'll get back to y'all here in just a minute all right all right guys so that's what i done i just soaked it down real good that's the inside that's where the radiator would go right there so i done that and i went ahead and soaked down as much as i could from the front side and uh but basically i'm gonna blow it out from the front side or from the back side first so i'm gonna let that sit for a little bit uh five ten minutes while i go uh, get the water hose and stuff like that hooked up and get it over here and then i'm, I'm not gonna uh uh, show spraying it out because I don't want to get my phone wet, but Basically you want to try to get all just spray it Don't use a pressure washer because you'll end up bending them fins and then uh, and don't use the the real high straight stream on the On the water hose if you have one of those adjustable nozzles because uh, you'll bend the fins and you don't want to bend those So just take your water hose and just blow it out or soak it out through the back side first and just work your way back and forth, back and forth from the from the back to the front, from back to front. And that way, hopefully, you get everything out of the intercooler and the the AC condenser. So, all right, all right, guys, this is the radiator. Uh, I'm gonna try to show you. Hopefully, y'all can see it. Try to show you exactly. And this, this hasn't been blowed out with air. I didn't put no cleaner or anything on it. I'm just blowing it out with a water hose. That's about the stream you want. I don't know if y'all can see how dirty that water is coming out of there. That's blowing it out from the back side. So you got all those bugs and stuff like that. And guys, I'm gonna save this radiator. I'm gonna take it to my local radiator shop. And I'm gonna have them flush it and clean it real good. And I'm gonna save it for a backup. In case that new one ever goes down or ever gets a hole or anything like that in it. It's blowing all them bugs and man, I got pine needles and leaves and stuff like that up in there. So, I mean, this could have been my problem too. Probably was. Like I said, guys, this is five years that I've had it of mowing yards and stirring up all that dust and everything else up in there. So. All right, so basically there's the intercooler uh, cleaned out. Uh, I don't know if you tell if there's any difference or anything like that, but like I said, basically I started at the back, blew it all out this way, and then started here, blew it back, Try to get down in between the AC condenser and the intercooler as much as I could. Then I went to the back and blew it back this way, and then back that way, and just back and forth, back and forth. And then uh, just cleaned it out real good. And uh, so, yep. Hopefully, between cleaning that out and everything real good, and then the uh, put my new radiator in, new thermostats. Hopefully that'll solve my, my overheating problem of uh, pulling the heel under a load. So, all right, well, I'm gonna let that dry up, let the ground dry up a little bit, and then we're gonna start putting the 
radiator back in and um, what I think I'm gonna do is get up here I was gonna put my thermostats back in first um I think I'm probably going to hold off and do that after I put the radiator back in because the reason for that is because um, when you get everything hooked back up, see all the antifreeze is out of the radiator, the, the reservoir, the motor, everything. So um, I don't have an actual radiator cap on the radiator, so everything has to go through this reservoir. So it goes down through the reservoir and everything, and then you're gonna you're gonna fill up the radiator, you're gonna fill up the engine and stuff like that. But it's not gonna get it completely uh, full and everything. So they uh, let's see here. So then you're gonna end up with a, a air pocket and everything. And um, and you don't want that, so because then you're gonna start overheating again. So what I'm gonna do is put the radiator in, and I'm gonna fill this up, uh, and then I'm also gonna fill the um, uh, the um, what do you call it where the thermostat goes. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll once I fill the reservoir up, if it'll start coming out of here. We'll find out if it does, then. I'll go ahead and plug that up. And I just remember that we done this to a fire truck one time and the um, and we ended up with a air pocket. So we had to end up uh, taking the, this is not the hose, but you know what I'm talking about. It's taking hose and just squeezing it and pumping the, the antifreeze back through, getting it circulated through. And then we could fill up the reservoir uh, some more, do the same thing, just keep pumping it through. So uh, maybe if I do that, Oh, uh, maybe it'll, I uh, won't have to sit there and pump that hose, but we'll see. And uh, if it don't work, then then I'll let y'all know. All right. All right, guys, let's try to put this new radiator in. Just try to be careful and don't bend any of the fins and all that mess. This thing sort of got to go in at a angle a little bit, I think. Just try not to, you're going to bend that. AC line out of the way a little bit, but just try not to bend it too much and break it. We definitely don't want to do that. Uh oh. I ain't want to do that. Alright, so right here is where it gets. A little bit complicated trying to get it past that intercooler boot. And you don't want to bust that lower plug off.
this is probably part of the tough part is trying to get everything lined back up Uh, I think it's pretty much on there pretty good so I'm fixing to get the bolts and put it back on all right guys so I got uh I didn't record putting the bolt stuff back in uh they're I mean pretty much backwards from whenever you took it out so um anyway um putting the transmission cooler lines back in this I don't know if all of them will, but this new radiator, it came with new clips. Uh, they was already in there. I didn't know that. Uh, so you just, whenever you push it in there, you'll hear it pop. You'll see it. You can see that little clip right there where my thumb nail is. There's a little clip in there like I showed you, the ones you had to take out. And you'll see them move and they'll pop back in. And then you can see it's not coming back out. So just push that in until it pops. Now the lower radiator hose did not come with a new one, so you gotta put that back in. And so, all right, I got the bottom transmission line in. There's the top one right up there. And there's the lower radiator uh, hose. So I got that back on there. I haven't put the clip in yet. So I'll put that back in in just a second. And then, uh, what you want to do is after you put that clip in, then you'll take it and you'll pull it just to make sure. And you can see that little groove right there. And then basically the clip, it'll go right in there and it'll sit and it'll catch inside that groove and that's what's going to hold it. So make sure that that hose is far enough on there to catch that uh, clip so whenever you get your uh, put your clip on just take your hose and pull it if it pulls out like it is right now then it's not CD good so um, if it don't pull out then everything's good so all right all right guys so I got the lower radiator hose on and it's seated see pins on and it's not coming off it's fully seated as far as it'll go down but whenever i start putting antifreeze in the reservoir that's what happens it's leaking just pouring it out so i don't know if whenever they built this radiator if it's not the right size or what but so that's what i'm running into right now all right all right guys we're back at it uh today and gonna try to finish this radiator up so um just got back from uh napa uh y'all saw in the past little clip um they that low radiator hose is not getting a good seal and i'm fixing to tell you what i found out and i was not happy so excuse me all right, so why in the world they don't make these things where you just put a hose on it and take a hose clamp, tighten it down? No, oh, that's that's too simple. So, uh, so instead they take these things, these hoses that has these little rubber gaskets inside of them, and then you push it on, and uh, then you got a clip that holds it in why they would do something like that that's under pressure and and has fluid running through it oh uh, 
Now, if it was like air or something like that, yeah, I might can understand, but but whenever it has fluid running through it, I don't know. To me, it's just another way for them to make money. And I'm fixing to prove that to you. So, went up there to Napa, and this little O-ring right here is what I needed. This goes inside the lower radiator hose. And that's whenever it slips over the the uh, piece that's, that comes out of the, uh, basically the mail end that comes out of the, the radiator. This basically slips over and it's supposed to seal around there. And then that little uh, that little U-shaped clip I showed you that clips over it's supposed to hold it on. Well, let me go over here to the old radiator. I'm going to show you something. So this is the old radiator. <clears throat> All right. Diameter. Or not, yeah, the diameter. So from one side to the other, that's the exact same on the new one. Get this jug out of the way. All right. From right here where the clip goes on, you don't see that. From there to the end, that's the exact same. From right here to here, that's the exact same. And then, so what I've done is, I'm going to jump ahead real quick, but whenever I got back home from Napa, I took this old seal and I put it over. All right. That's how far it goes onto the old radiator. That's the reason I never had any issues. With the new radiator, it goes on just a little bit further, about right there. So, by the time that I slip it on and get that clip lock, well, on the new radiator, it's still sitting right there. So, therefore, it's not getting a good seal. So, I got a little gap in it. So, come to find out, the thickness of this wall right here is thinner on the new radiator. So, turn y'all back around here. Now y'all can see me. So any of you guys that are replacing the radiator, if you have not had this problem, or if you have had this problem, leave it in the comments and let me know. Uh, so that way I know whether I'm right or I'm just, I don't know, stupid. I don't know. But what I found out at Napa is he looked it up, and he can get this piece right here. Only problem is, it's for the updated lower radiator hose. So, and so it won't fit according to what it shows in the thing, or in the uh, description and everything, that it won't fit the old version, the original version that came on the truck. So, that started making me think that this is a new version radiator with an old version lower radiator hose. So therefore, it seems like that they're making this stuff to where you have to replace everything. You can't just buy the radiator, put it in, and then slip the old hose on. So... So I called Chevrolet and asked them, told them, that, hey, I just need just this little gasket. Well, here's the kicker. They don't sell just this little gasket. Um, you got to buy the whole entire hose, lower radiator hose, which is $300 from the dealer. I can get it for $250 at Napa. Um... But, you're still going to run into the same issue with new versus old. So, guys, like I said, if if you've put a new radiator on your on your truck, 
And on, on this model truck, 2012 Silverado 3500, 6.6 .6 Duramax, if you replace the radiator and and the original lower radiator hose hooked up fine, you didn't have to replace no gasket or anything like that, let me know, please. Uh, so that way I know whether or not uh, if I'm right about all this other stuff or if maybe this gasket was just bad i don't know but anyway um so here i'm thinking oh crap what am i gonna do because i cannot afford a new radiator a lower radiator hose so on the way home i stopped by our local uh one of our local diesel uh shops um they mainly i mean they work on big trucks but they also work on a lot of um uh, like diesel pickups so talk to the guy in there asked him hey you got anything like this what's it going on told him 2012 silverado 3500 well i don't have one for that but i do have some for a um uh, uh, a ford so we went over and looked at it and i don't know if you can see guys let me back this up this one I mean, this is probably the original one, and you can see sort of how it's flat and stuff, and it's, I mean, it's not as, not as thick as what it used to be, or durable as what it used to be. So, we found one that was the same size. Granted, it came off a of Ford, um, and I'm going to try to get a link, or uh, uh, if I can go back tomorrow to that uh, diesel shop and I'm gonna see if he can't give me a part number for that um, and if he can then I'll I'll come back later and I'll put it in the description um, as of right now I do not have the part number for it but anyway he gave me that told me I could have it and uh, so I got it home put it on and let me go over here and I'll show you I've already put it on, guys, so. All right. There it is. So remember, that lower right, that, that O-ring sits about right there inside the inside this lower radiator hose. Remember, you had that little metal clip right there. So I put that metal clip on there, and I was trying to wiggle it on there, and... It's a snug fit, very snug, in order to get it up to where that clip will latch. But it's not on. I've gotten I've got antifreeze in there. It's not completely filled up, but it's not leaking. It's not leaking anymore. That's a snug fit. The, that thing don't even turn. So that's what I want. So luckily, the gas get off of a Ford uh again i don't know what year or anything like that if i find out i'll leave it in the description but luckily that fit so um so now i'm fixing to get ready to finish all this stuff up um i still got to put the upper radiator hose on still got to put my thermostats in and um and fill it up with antifreeze and then put my my upper uh fan shroud on and everything should be hooked back up um uh, and then i'll crank it up and then uh, try to get all the air pockets and all that stuff out so i'm gonna go ahead and end this video um uh, putting all this other stuff back on guys like i said the only thing i like is just upper radiator hose thermostat i'm doing that in a separate video so if you want to uh, see how to change the thermostat in this truck um go check out that video it'd probably be out a week from this one um and um yep so thank the lord that worked uh at least i hope it did so um it, it's just a shame that that they make stuff nowadays to where you got to go spend a lot more money i mean make it to where you got to go spend 250 300 dollars just because of a little 10 15 dollar o-ring it's ridiculous so but that's how they make more money but anyway 
So, uh, hope y'all enjoyed this video. I know it was long, and um, I know there's other videos. There's I found a couple on these trucks, um, and basically they just sort of breeze through them uh, real fast. I wanted to try to give y'all exactly how it was going to be from start to finish, and the the good, bad, and the ugly. So, uh, not just taking the radiator out or undoing the bolts and then they come back with the second clip hey it's out i wanted to show y'all exactly taking it out and everything and so again i hope y'all enjoyed this i'm uh, sorry if i got sidetracked on some stuff uh but if y'all don't mind y'all hit that like share subscribe button uh hit that bell notification so that way you know when i come out with new videos and um and again guys leave me leave me a comment if, if you've ran into this problem or or if you've replaced again if you replaced the radiator and and everything hooked back up just fine let me know um uh, granted mine's already done but somebody else could be watching this video that's going to run into the same problem uh so you can help somebody else out um but again we're gonna get off here again hit that like share subscribe button i really really appreciate it and uh and we'll get we out on the next one so as always y'all be safe Simplify.